tonight. A local coffee shop in Pullman is closing for good. And find out what change Governor Inslee is making to the stay-at-home order. Murrow News 8 starts now. Murrow News 8 starts right now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Zach Miller. And I'm Sophia Canton. Welcome back to Murrow News 8. The popular Pullman coffee shop Daily Grind will be permanently closing its doors in downtown Pullman. Daily Grind announced on their Instagram page yesterday that the coffee house will be closing for good this Friday. However, the drive through stands will remain open with the closure. They are trying to get rid of some supplies such as honey sticks and water bottles. Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories is investing millions in cybersecurity education at the University of Idaho. SEL will be contributing $2.5 million over five years to expand cybersecurity research and education to develop inherently cybersecure industrial control systems. UI Center for Secure and Dependable Systems in the College of Engineering will offer the first cybersecurity bachelor's degree program in Idaho this coming fall. According to the Seattle Times, Boeing said Wednesday that it will cut more than 15% of jobs in the Seattle area to cope with the sharp downturn in the aviation industry. Boeing will also slow their production of jets built in Everett and Renton. CEO Dave Calhoun said, quote, the sharp reduction is demand in demand for our airplanes we see out over the next several years won't support the size of the workforce we have today, unquote. Now we have Caitlin Rappel reporting live with some information about how long we may have to stay home for. Caitlin? Thanks, Zach. Well, unfortunately, I can't give an exact date, but Governor Inslee announced today that the stay-at-home order will be extended past May 4th. Inslee did not give a specific date, but said more information will be presented on Friday. This comes after easing a few restrictions on construction, outdoor activities such as fishing, and even some elective surgeries. Here is a clip from today's press conference. Judgment, which is, means we look at all of the numbers that go into the central question of when we can reopen our business in a way that doesn't dramatically increase. We should start, obviously, because it's the status of, of, the, of the virus in our state. And I want to show you some of the metrics that we look at. They are not all, there are other things we do look at, but these are some of the highlights. So I'm actually in Riverside County in California, where some restrictions are also beginning to be lifted. Private and public golf courses that are that close on April 2nd have been re reopened for play. Good news, but it is important to understand that there are still restrictions. So play is limited to foursomes. There are no caddies, no in-person dining in the clubhouses, no large gatherings such as fundraisers, and masks are to be worn by all players, and social distancing measures still must be followed. So where I'm staying, the golf course opened last Thursday, and there has been actually a pleasantly surprising amount of golfers. Chief Operating Officer of Greater Palm Springs Convention and Visitors Bureau, Scott White, said golf is an iconic part of our destination, our history, and our economy. And I have to say I agree with that because I definitely think golf is a big attraction down here. Um, Riverside County also recently announced a one-person-per-pool policy, so the pool we're able to use opened yesterday. This means that there is no use of the furniture, so no tables or lounge chairs and only one person in the pool or hot tub at a time. And you also have to maintain social distancing. But that's all from me. Back to you, Zach. Thanks, Kaylin. According to KGW, an Oregon woman went to Switzerland to die on her own terms. Annie Parker, a 70-year-old woman, Portland native with Alzheimer's, chose to end her life before, in her opinion, the disease did it for her. Even though Oregon was the first state to allow terminally ill people to choose to end their own lives, they do not allow it for people with Alzheimer's. So to end her life the way she wanted, Parker had to go to Switzerland where it's legal. The Pentagon Swiss Association told KGW that before patients get the operation, 
they have to go through a rigorous psychiatric evaluation to make sure it is their idea to get the procedure. According to the New York Times, the U.S. economy fell at a 4.8% annual rate in the first quarter of the year. So let's take a look at some of these figures. This is the first decline since 2014 and the worst since 2008. The gross domestic product annual rate is at 30% or more, which according to the New York Times is a scale that hasn't been seen since the Great Depression. Consumer spending has dropped by 7.6%. And these numbers may not make a whole lot of sense, but basically what this means is the United States is producing less and consumers are purchasing less. Jerome H. Powell, the Federal Reserve Chair, said, quote, the depth and the duration of the economic downturn are extraordinarily uncertain, end quote. Now we have Grace Arnes with some news on the NCAA. Grace? Thanks, Sophia. Yeah, today in the NCAA, they announced they'll be allowing student athletes uh, to make money off of their likenesses starting in the season, uh, in the 2021-2022 season. This is a big move for the NCAA since it has been seeming to resist uh, the effort made by student athletes to gain access and control over their likeness for a while. The new rule would allow athletes to make money off of their faces, names, and signature looks. The best example for this as Cougs is um, some of the merch that has been made off of our quarterbacks the past couple of years. Um, as you can see, this shirt on screen is an obvious reference to Gardner Minshew last year and his famous mustache. With the new rule, uh, Minshew would have been able to make money off of his signature look and that put him and WSU in the spotlight last year. This is also important for athletes that had their most profitable times while in college. Um, the best example of this from WSU would be former WSU quarterback Luke Folk, who saw his most, who saw his most amount of playing time uh, while at WSU. Many, many sweatshirts were made like the one that you can see on screen now um, that had certain like certain uh, quotes and things like that that directly uh, that were directly in reference to Luke Falk. Um, many sports fans are also hoping that the new rule means the return of EA's popular NCAA football game uh, video game. However, that may not be the case. As you can see on the screen here, popular uh, 24 24-7 sports analysts are saying that the new rule may not allow for athletes as a whole to make a deal. Um, so the video game would have to compensate everyone for their likenesses individually instead of all at once. So it may not be possible for EA to create separate deals with every single athlete. Um, though that famous video game may not be able to return, Dr. Anthony Fauci said sports may be possible to return with some new rules. The new rules would include athletes staying in complete isolation unless they are participating in sports with heightened amounts of testing. However, overall, he said it would be very difficult for sports to resume this year. Uh, that's all I have for sports today. Now to Kirsten Rosser to tell us about the forecast and why some people's spring allergies might be acting up more than usual. Kirsten? Thanks, Grace. Well, we are seeing some higher temperatures, but that doesn't mean fully sunny days are going to be ahead. Today, our high reached around 76 and our lows around 49. We saw some really high temps today, even though there was a bit of cloud cover. There was some southwest winds ranging. So if you have plans to go anywhere tonight, just know that there is a chance of showers and a possible thunder before midnight. Um, today, the gusts will reach around 18 miles per hour. For tomorrow, the high will be around 61 with a low of 40. Winds will reach up to 13 miles per hour. Um, there's a slight chance around a 40% chance of showers. That is possible throughout the day tomorrow. Um, towards the night, gusts will reach up to 22 miles per hour. Taking a look at the five days, the next five days will kind of follow a similar pattern of partly sunny skies with a low percent chance of rain, but the same warm temperatures. Friday will be at least sunny with a high of 64. Um, so while safely practicing social distancing, maybe step outside and soak up some of that sunshine. Saturday will pick up with the trend of again, some possible showers, but there'll be a high of 70 that day. And finally, Sunday has a 60% chance of showers with a high of 56. So getting a bit colder, um, but not too cool. Something I did wanna talk about was the pollen in the air. This week especially, today's pollen levels are reaching around 10.4, which is a medium high pollen in the air. And the rest of the week kind of follows a similar trend with levels ranging from 9.9 .9 to 7.9. 
Now this is because spring brings in the highest pollen, which a lot of us know, but those levels go up when plants, grasses, and trees are flowering. Um, having warm days with the windy weather and little rain creates actually a higher pollen level. So because we're having these high temps but rain, the levels are gonna be higher. So check um, the levels before heading out if you struggle with any allergies, and that's the best advice I can give back to you guys. Thanks, Kirsten. That is all from us here at Murrow News 8. You can watch us live on YouTube every weekday at 5.30. And don't forget, news content can still be found at nwpb.org forward slash MNA. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Have a good night, stay home, and stay healthy.